This morning we will be bringing to a conclusion our study in union with Christ. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. Our union in Christ brings every spiritual blessing. Ephesians 1.3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. In Christ, we have everything. Our union in Christ then explains God's great provision for us. And therefore, we, we have the we have statements. Our union in Christ shapes our identity. And therefore, we have the we are statements. Our union in Christ enables our obedience. And therefore, we have the we can statements. Now, our union in Christ promises our future. And therefore, we have the we hope for statements. The Word of God says that in Christ we are in Him. Ephesians 1, 7. In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of our trespass, and to the rich, according to the riches of His grace. And 1 Corinthians 1, 30. And because of Him you are in Christ Jesus, who has made to us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. This morning... It's kind of, kind of unusual, we do this occasionally, but I'm just going to ask this morning, maybe just set your Bible beside you and listen. As we go through 88 statements of what it means to be united with Christ. Now I know we are not an amening, hallelujah, can I have kind of church. But you can unfasten your seatbelt this morning if you would like. Thank you. <laughs> I present a sample of these four categories that we are to hear, to know, to believe individually, and all together to affirm corporately. And so we believe and receive all that God has done for us in Christ. And because we are in Christ, we have all that God has said He will do for us. And so I have God's glorious grace, lavishly given without restriction. He predestined us for adoption to Himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of His will, which He lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight. I have been chosen, and God desires me to bring fair fruit. Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. I am the vine, and you are the branches. Whoever abides in me, and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. I have been called. I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called. Paul writes, who saved us and called, God saved us and called us with a holy calling, not because of our works which we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began. I have redemption. He predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of a will which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight. I have been established, anointed, and sealed by God. And it is God who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us and has also put his seal on us and given us his spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. I have been brought near to God through Christ's blood. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once afar off 
have been brought near by the blood of Jesus, by the blood of Christ. I have access to the Father, for through him, through Christ, we both have access in one spirit to the Father. I have the mind of Christ. For who has understood the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. I have an assurance that all things work together for good, and we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. I have not been given a spirit of fear, but of power and love and self-discipline. Paul writing, for this reason, I remind you, Timothy, to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of, hand, of my hands. For God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Because we are in Christ, I have an abundant life. The thief comes only to steal and to kill and destroy. I am come that you might have life and you might have it more abundantly. I have peace with Jewish believers, Ephesians 2.14. For he himself, Christ, is our peace, who has made us, Jew and Gentile, both one, and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility, that is, the law. I have peace, I have God's peace, which is protecting my heart and mind, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And I have a hidden resurrection life, Colossians 3, 1 to 4. If you then have been raised with Jesus, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, appears, you will also appear with him in glory. We believe and receive all that God has done for us in Christ. And we agree and confess all that God says about us. Because we are in Christ, we have an identity that is rooted in who Jesus is and therefore in who we are. I am blessed in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. I am chosen before the foundation of the world, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. I am chosen and dearly loved. Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved. Put on compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. I belong to God. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? Within you, whom you have from God, you are not your own, for you have been bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. I am a saint. Paul writes, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. And then every New Testament book that opens with, to the saints that are at Clear Creek Chapel. I am holy and blameless, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. I am blameless in God's sight, who will sustain you to the end, blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. I am hidden with Christ and God, for you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. I am forgiven. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and has transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. I have been justified. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
I am the righteousness of God. 2 Corinthians 5.21 for, this, for our sake, he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. I am born again. Since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and abiding word of God, I am a new creation. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. I am redeemed from the curse of the law. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who has hanged on a tree. I have been redeemed, bought by his blood. I have been redeemed from the curse of the law. I have been redeemed so that he is, I am now owned and mastered by God. I am alive with Christ. Even when we were dead and our trespasses he made us alive together with Christ, for by grace you have been saved. I am raised up with Christ. He has raised us up with him and seated us with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Colossians 2.12 says, We have been buried with him in baptism in which you also were raised with him through faith and the powerful working of God who raised him from the dead. I am seated with Christ in the heavenly realms. He has raised us up with him and seated us with him in heavenly places in Christ. Christ Jesus. You are in Christ in heavenly places at this moment in the spiritual realm, even as you sit here this morning. I am sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit who was promised us. I am God's workmanship. I am God's poema. The Greek word, I am God's work of art, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should live and walk in them. I am set free. You will know the truth, Jesus says, and the truth will set you free. For the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. You have been set free. I am crucified with Christ. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. The life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I am more than a conqueror, Romans 8, 37. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. I am no longer condemned, Romans 8, 1 and 2. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, for the law, the spirit of life, has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. You are no longer condemned. I am a part of God's kingdom. He has made us a kingdom and priest to his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, that is, the forgiveness of our sins. I am a member of God's household, Ephesians 2.19. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints, and you are members of the household of God. I am therefore God's child, but to all who did not receive him who believed in his name, who, but to all who did receive him who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. I am adopted as his son, Ephesians 1 5. He predestined us for adoption to himself. Um, as sons through Christ Jesus, according to the eternal purpose of his will. 
I am a member of Christ's body, 1 Corinthians 12, 27. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. I am a citizen of heaven. Our citizenship is in heaven. And from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. I am a holy temple. Ephesians 2, 20 and 21. We are built on the foundation, the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. Do you not know that your body then is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God, for you are not your own? You are part, a living stone in a holy temple. I am a dwelling then for the Holy Spirit, Ephesians 2.22. In him you also were being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. I am Christ's friend, John 15.15. 15. Jesus says, I no longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. For all that I have heard from my Father, I have made known to you. I am faithful, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus and are faithful in Christ Jesus. I am a part of God's great purpose. He has made known to us the mystery of his will according to his purpose which he set forth in Christ. This was according to the eternal purpose that he has realized in Christ Jesus our Lord. I am born of God and the evil one cannot touch me. 1 John 5, 18. John writes, we know that everyone who has been born of God does not keep on sinning, but he who was born of God protects him and the evil one does not touch him. I am salt and light in the world. Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth. Salt has lost its taste. How shall its saltiness be restored? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light on the world, a city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. I am a personal witness of Jesus Christ, Acts 1.8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria unto the end of the earth. We are part of the, to the end of the earth. I am God's co-worker, 2 Corinthians 6, 1. Working together with him, then we appeal to you to not receive the grace of God in vain. I am part of the ministry of reconciliation. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ Jesus, was, that God, in Christ Jesus, was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. I am not in real want. Philippians 4.19, confessing as Paul did, and my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ. And I am victorious through Christ. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. I am victorious through faith. 1 John 5, 4, For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. And I am overcoming the world. Little children, you are from God, and you have overcome the world. For greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. And I am qualified to share in his inheritance, Colossians 1.12, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified to his share in the inheritance of the saints in the realm of light. We believe and receive all that God has done for us in Christ. We agree and confess all that God says about us, and we can obey 
all that God has enabled us to do in Christ. Because we are in Christ, we have the power for a life of obedience and wisdom and ministry. This is just a small sampling of what you can do, how you can obey, what you can confess that you're being enabled by the power and the grace of God to do. I can be obedient from the heart, Romans 6, 17 and 18. Thanks be to God that you who were once slaves of sin have become obedient from heart to the standard of teaching to which you were committed and having been set free from sin have become the slaves of righteousness. I can do all that God requires. Philippians 4.13 I can do all things through him who strengthens me. I can approach God with freedom and confidence. Ephesians 3.12 In whom we have boldness and access with confidence through our faith in Jesus Christ. I can grasp how wide, long, high, and deep is Christ's love for us. Ephesians 3, 17 and 18, Paul praying, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth of the love of God. I can bring glory to God, Ephesians 3, 20 and 21. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. I can mature spiritually, Ephesians 4.15. Rather speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, that is, into Christ. I can serve through God's power, which works through me, Ephesians 3.7. Of this gospel I was made a minister according to the gift of God's grace which was given me by the working of his power. I can have a new attitude and a new lifestyle. Ephesians 4, 21 and following. Paul writes in this longer section, assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him as the truth is in Jesus to put off your old self which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires and to be renewed in the spirit of your mind and to put on the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness in holiness. Therefore, there are consequences of all of that. Having put away falsehood, let each of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. Let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor doing honest work with his own hands so that he may have something to share with anyone in, le in need. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouth, but only such as is good for building up as fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgiving has forgiven you. Because you are in Christ, you can put away false falsehood and speak the truth. You can do anger biblically. You can stop stealing and work hard to give. You can um, stop speaking in a way that corrupts others but rather builds up others. You can stop grieving the spirit. You can put away bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor. And you can be kind to one another and tenderhearted and forgiving one another. That's what you can, you are enabled to do because you are no longer in this realm, but you have been transferred to this realm. You have died, and you can put off that old, and you can put on the new through thinking in a way that God has called you.
to think. I can have a new attitude and a new lifestyle. I can be humble and gentle and patient and lovingly tolerant of others. Paul writes, I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bonds of peace. I can be kind and compassionate to others, as we already saw. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you. Along with all malice, be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. And therefore I can forgive others. Forgive one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. I am a light to others and can exhibit goodness and righteousness and truth. Ephesians 5, 8 to 9. For at one time you were darkness, but now you are a light. In the Lord, walk as children of light. I can understand what God's will is, Ephesians 5, 17. Therefore, don't be foolish, but understand what God's will for you is. I can give thanks for everything. Ephesians 5, 20. We are to be giving thanks always for everything to God the Father in the name of of our Lord Jesus Christ. I can submit to others in God's plan for roles and authority. Ephesians 5.21, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. I can honor God through marriage. Ephesians 5.33, however, let each of you love his wife as himself and let the wife see that she respects her husband. I can parent my children as a Christian Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. I can be strong in God's power. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. I can stand firm in the day of evil and therefore take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand firm. I can be content. For I am not alone. Hebrews 13, 5. Keep your life free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. We believe and receive all that God has done for us. We agree and confess to all that God says about us. And we can obey all that God has enabled us to do in Christ. And we hope for all that God has promised us in Christ. Because we are in Christ, we have promises to believe that will sustain our hope. And in selecting just a few of these was so hard. But in Christ, I have been prayed for by Jesus Christ to be one with other believers. Jesus says, I do not ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. They all may be one, just as you, the Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one even as we are. I in them and you in me, that they may become perfectly one so that the world may know that you sent me and love them even as you have loved me. I am promised eternal life. Truly, truly, I say to you that whoever believes has eternal life. I am confident that God will perfect the work he has begun among us. And I am sure of this, that who began a good work in you will bring it to the completion at the day of Jesus Christ. I have put my hope in Christ. In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory. And I will be shown incomparable riches of God's grace. Ephesians 2, 7. So that in the coming ages, not age, ages, unfolding ages of eternity, so that in the coming ages, 
he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. God will show the fullness of his kindness to me, Ephesians 2, 7, so that in the coming ages he might show those immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us to Christ. And I share in the promise of Christ Jesus, Ephesians 3, 6. This is the mystery. The mystery is this, that the Gentiles are fellow heirs members of the same body, and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. So then we can together exclaim, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has coming. And so live as one who is in Christ. Become who you are. Confess that you are able to do all that God has called you to do. And stand on tiptoes along with all creation, looking and longing for the day when the new heavens and the new earth will come in which righteousness dwells and in which the glory of the Lord will flow throughout all the universe to demonstrate the riches of of his grace and his kindness to the church. And so therefore we say, blessed be the Father, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Let's stand. Father, we bow before you, we stand before you. We lift up our hearts to praise and glorify and honor you who have done all of this to undeserving, sinful, dead, depraved people whom you loved from eternity past, who you chose to, your, to be saved, who you set apart for salvation by the work of the Spirit, who you raised from our deadness, who you have given us a new life, who has placed us in the kingdom of God, who has transformed us and is transforming us into the image of Christ, who has shared in us your spirit, who has brought us to life, who has given us all your great riches in Christ as we are joint heirs in Christ with him. To you we lift our praise, our adoration, and all the glory for you alone are worthy. And all God's people said, Amen.